Thank you so much. So this is a new experience for me, not being, oh, I guess I'm not going to travel with this, am I? Um, I am used to speaking to film community audiences. So how many people here in the film business? Oh, yeah, LA, baby. That's right. OK, good. So i will speaking to you four tonight. Everybody else, you know, have a snack. So uh, we don't need software updates now. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, Distributor is a little different from everybody else who shared tonight who are all awesome. You know, I wish that we had some kind of thing where we could have our users, you know, use their hands to create value for themselves and, you know, using their, their webcams. But we're in, in vis-a-vis a, a crowd like this, we're fairly low tech, interestingly. But in our industry, which is the film business, it's no tech. So we look like geniuses. So. Uh, <laughs> To give you an idea, since really most people aren't in the, the, what we do, we also happen to be B2B, so it's, it's going to be even more dry. Awesome. Uh, the, uh, what, what happens now, if you have a film and you want to get your film out there, you have to find a distributor. And the old way of doing it is, you know, you make your movie, you go to Sundance, and you hope they buy your film for a million dollars, and it'll be awesome. But out of 245 films or something like that that Sundance does, like six get an offer. So you can see how quickly that model uh, disappoints. So after that, you're in a DIY situation or you, or you deal with you know, very small distributors. And what they end up doing is they will take your rights for 7 to 25 years, all rights worldwide, and they will deduct expenses that you don't understand what they are. And they will uh, share your revenue up to 50% after expenses. And so filmmakers. Quickly, if you, as you've read about the music industry, the film industry is in the same trajectory. It's, it's a disaster. People spend hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars on films, and they can't recoup. So in all of these new distribution platforms, uh, Amazon, iTunes, Netflix, also Hulu and cable VOD, which we all know from our, you know, our, our uh, sofas, um, filmmakers only are stuck with the option to basically take these revenue share and rights deals. But they also have to wait for a check in the mail with a paper report that is either sometimes uh, you know, totally inscrutable with the, the charges or actually has no check in the mail or the check bounces. So what we did was a, sim a simple thing. If anybody's heard of Without a Box or TuneCore, we kind of poached from their models and we created sort of a syndication model where you pay a flat fee and we'll do the work to get you onto these platforms, but we don't take any of your rights. You keep all your rights. And we'll collect from these platforms, but we'll give you 100% of your revenue forever. So you can see how that's a much better deal, obviously, if you're a filmmaker. Um, and filmmakers are thrilled about it. Distributors are miserable about it. And we are in the good place. So um, you know, again, it's, it's slightly embarrassing. There's not, you know, in, the, in, a, in a group like this, to think that in our industry, nobody collects any information except by paper, which is pretty much true, or emails. Um, we have just very simple forms like, you know, metadata collection forms and report forms that allow people to log in, see their username and password, they get to view their account, they get to see what we're collecting in real time across the platforms that they're using, and they get to withdraw their funds as we deposit them. So again, unbelievable to most if you're not in this business. Distributors keep your money for up to a year. And they'll send you a report saying, this is what happened in July of 2009. And so here's your check. And it's for $16. And the reason it's 16 even though the top line is 20000 well, we had $16,000 of encoding fees. You know, we had $4,000 of marketing fees. We won't itemize what we did, but trust us, and here's your 16 bucks. So it's, it's, a, it's a gruesome business. And what we've basically done is entirely made it transparent. We've made it very familiar to people who are used to using websites for business purposes, retail and otherwise. And you know, it's, it's fairly obvious when you see what we've done, but we're literally the only company that does this in the entire film industry. So um, it's obviously good for us, um, and uh, we're, we're growing. We're about to add, as I mentioned, cable VOD, which um, is an interesting thing because in cable VOD, there's an additional problem for filmmakers. <clears throat> if you go to your television and you uh, view a video on demand and let's say Comcast, Comcast takes typically 50 or 60% of your 
$4.99. They then route that through a company called In Demand that's co-owned by many of the studios. In Demand takes 25%. Typically, they go to one of the studios, like a Warner Digital, which is sort of a clearinghouse for rights. They take 25%. From Warner Digital, it goes to one of the aggregators, which is usually where we sit, and they take 25%. So you can also see how, if, you have, if you're trying to make any money on your movie, you're basically, shall I say, you're just fucked. So, um, <laughs> so what, we, what we consider ourselves you know, is, is the anti, I won't say it again, but we're the, you know, we're the anti-rape company of, of the film business. <laughs> so what we do with VOD now is we're also using a flat fee model, but instead of going through aggregator one to studio A to in demand to a platform, we have direct deals with the platforms or in some cases where they won't give us a direct deal, we just go directly to in demand and into the platform. But then we give 100% of the money to the filmmaker. So. You know, for all of you filmmakers, I hope that we'll see you, in, you know, at some point doing uh, all of your distribution through us. And uh, for anybody who isn't a filmmaker, I just urge you to look for, I can't remember who wrote the book, I know you guys all know, The Blue Ocean Idea. That's the thing that is always exciting. When you're just going about your business and you say, wait a minute, literally nobody is doing this. There's got to be a business there. It's, it's a very exciting and fairly easy way to grow a weird niche little business like this into something that can get acquired. And we were just acquired in March by uh, another company called Indiegogo, which is a crowdfunding platform, which uh, yeah, talk to me afterwards and we'll have a drink and we'll talk about what crowdfunding is, and that's fun. But um, So it's possible and I urge you all to do it. And if you want to learn more, please ask me a question. Good question. Uh, let's take some applause first. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so the fee right now for uh, the, 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 uh, the service started as an iTunes only service because two years ago that was really the only place that anybody was making any money. So it started as iTunes only for $1,295. Um, and that includes, oh, thank you. That includes um, encoding, chapter breaking your film, and shepherding it through the QC process, which is miserable for iTunes. They actually fail uh, a lot of content that's already appeared on Showtime um, and, and other places like that. So $1,295 was for just iTunes. When we added Netflix and uh, Amazon VOD, we said you can do both of those also for the same $1,295. Um, and if you break it up, it's a, they're different a la carte prices. We added Hulu. That's $399. But the MSO, the, excuse me, the lingo for cable operators, um, the cable VOD is going to be priced in another kind of exciting way, which is a, uh, at $100 per million uh, subscriber penetration. So if you, it works out to something like if you get across the board carriage from everybody from Comcast to DirecTV up in the sky to t, uh, uh, you know, AT&T and Verizon, which are the telco um, services that Fios and you, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you get everybody, it's around 90, 98 million households. So it would be around little, just shy of $10,000. And that sounds like a lot, but when um, you consider that other films that have been through the VOD process, they might top line 100 grand and only get paid, you know, 18,000. If they make, you know, it's especially attractive to a, a genre film company, like if you made a horror film called, you know, uh, bloody college campus, you know, and so you made $100,000 and, you know, bloody college campus, and you're now, you just made bloody college campus two in 3D. Um, you know pretty much that if you made 100000 on the first one, you're going to make somewhere around there, plus, you know, your 3D bonus of 20%. Um, and you don't want to share that with the, the five pockets that you have to pay to get up to Comcast. So you say, wow, 10000 bucks, I will pay that every day to make 120. Whereas, you know, if you're getting your 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, you don't want to pay that. So if you have no idea if anybody wants to see your film, you're not going to pay $10,000 to find out. But it's very popular with smaller production companies, or bigger production companies, smaller distribution companies. Any other questions? <clears throat> we, um, the whole concept of our thing is that we don't market. That's our like, the concept. But the fact of the matter is that we are a wealth of advice and tips of how you can actually make things happen. Um, and with things, places like iTunes, this gets a little granular, but with places like iTunes, there's a huge myth that's propagated by 
uh, aggregators and distributors that they have the clout to place the film in a, in a very advantageous way. But you know, iTunes is a rev share company, and everything that they take, they want to maximize its revenue. So if I, when I'm having my call with iTunes, little old me, not a rev share company, and I say, hey, we just did this film, for example, there's a, a Sundance film called New York Doll, which was about Arthur Killer Kane, who was the bass player for the New York Dolls, cool, whatever. They actually did a reunion tour and released their new album right around when we wanted to release on iTunes. And so we said, hey, iTunes, they're releasing an album and they have a reunion tour. It'd probably be a good idea to put it on the front page. And they're like, that's a good idea. Let's put it on the front page. So the conversation was about that long. It's not like we did an ad campaign or a marketing push or anything. I just said, what, what about doing that? And they did it. And it's because it's in their interest to do it. They make 30% on every sale, so they do it. Um, but as a rule, we don't do marketing and we don't charge for marketing. So if you, again, if you have already paid and done the work of building your audience, creating your demand, a flat fee model obviously is attractive to harvest the fruits of that demand. And that's the people that it works for. Adam, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>